welcome to your 15th QB64 tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about something called arrays. Now, arrays are basically a list of a single type of data type. Like, um, for example, a list of integers would be an array, a list of strings would be an array, and so on. And so let's get started first. The syntax for creating an array is as follows, dim, and we're just going to call this array, uh, let's just call it numbers, numbers, and then you, in the parameters, you put how many numbers you want to put in this array, so let's put five numbers, and then numbers, of course, are integers, so integer. So we just created an array uh, with five numbers and all of these numbers will be integers. And we can set values to these individual numbers by saying number 1 equals, and we can just put 66. So the first number in the number array is 66. And we can keep doing this number 2, always put it in the parameters, 2 equals 22, you can be anything. Number 3 equals uh, 44. Number 55 equals, what am I doing, 55. Number 4 equals 55, sorry about that. And then, then lastly, since we have five objects, we'll only have five integers to set. So number 5 equals 2. Okay, so we just set the elements of our array. Each individual like number in our array is called an element. And so, keep in mind, we have five elements in our array, so we have to declare one, two, three, four, five elements. And then we're going to set values to each of these elements. Element 1 is 66, element 2 is 22. And as we increase this, we can put six elements. We just have to go ahead and add number, oh, I don't have my hands on the home keys, number 6, and then that will equal 88. And now that we have our array defined, we can go ahead and print number uh, 2. And so when we print number 2, it's going to go look into our array, it's going to find number 2, and it's going to print the value of number 2. So if we go ahead and run our program, we see that it printed 22. And the same goes for any other element. We can go ahead and print number 4, and number 4 is 55. So if we go ahead and run our program, we get 55. We can also add elements together. For example, print number 4 plus number 3. And so it's going to take number 4, 55, and number 3, 44, and add those together, which should be 99. So if we go ahead and run this program, 99. And so that's a very basic array for you. We can also have an array of strings, so I'm just going to go ahead and clear all this. We can go ahead and dim, uh, we'll just call this names, and we're going to have three names as string. Okay, so we can do name 1, and that's going to equal, ah, can't type today, Billy Bob, and we got Nair, name already in use on current line. We misspelled name right here, it's names, not name. Alright, name, names, 2, equals uh, Bubba and of course names three. Why am I choosing these kinds of names? I don't know. Bessie. Okay, they all start with the B. How about that? Okay, so if we go ahead and print na print, oh I'm sorry, names two, it should print Bubba. So if we go ahead and run our program, Prince Bubba. 
But what would happen if we tried to do if we try to add two elements together like we did for the integer ar array? Well, let's find out. Names uh, three. So we'll go ahead and add those two elements together. It just collides Bubba with Bessie. And one way we can navigate through an array, a really cool way, we're going to use a for loop. So of course we're going to have to declare an integer to be the counter for the for loop. dim x as integer. And we're going to go ahead and type 4 x equals, and we have three elements, so 1, 2, 3. And it's going to print names x next x. Okay, so just to walk you through this for loop, x equals 1, it's going to go ahead and print names 1. It's going to print Billy Bob. Next x, x will now equal 2. It's going to print names 2, so it's going to print Bubba. And then lastly, it's going to, uh, x is going to equal 3, so it's going to print names 3, and it's going to equal Bessie. And once it equals 3, the for loop will end. So if we go ahead and run our program, Billabob, Bubba, and Bessie. And the same goes for integers as well. Now keep in mind that when you go and use programs such as Python, Ruby, or C++, every time you create an array, the first element will have to equal 0. So just note that, but in QB64 you can have it equal whatever you want. You can do 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, but in this case we're just going to use 1, 2, and 3. But keep in mind that in future languages, try to get into the habit of starting your first element with zero. Anyways, now that this tutorial, the teaching part of this tutorial is over, I'm going to tell you why arrays are useful. Now, the following example I'm going to show you is going to show exactly why arrays are useful. So if we clear all this, we're going to declare a new array, dim names, and we're just going to have two names in here as string and then we're gonna have our first name equals uh, let's put Zach and our second name is gonna equal Trenton and we're gonna go ahead and use a for loop now hypothetically let's say you have like uh, let me just go ahead and declare this real quick. Now hypothetically, let's say you declared like a hundred elements in, a, in an array for a huge Microsoft company or whatever, but then you forget, oh no, I accidentally forgot to uh, add this part of text. Instead of, I didn't want to have Zach, I wanted to have Zach is awesome. And I didn't want to have Trenton, I wanted to have Trenton is awesome. So instead of going out here and writing is awesome and is awesome following, we can we don't need to do that. We can just go ahead and um, start a for loop. 4x equals 1, and we're just going to put to 2, since there are two elements. 4x equals 1 to 2. Names x equals, and we're going to go ahead, get ahead and add uh, names x plus, and we're going to add is awesome to it. So we can go ahead and put names x, what we originally have, and make it equal to names x plus is awesome. And then we can go ahead and print names x, and then next x. So now if we go ahead and run our program, We get Zach is awesome, Trent is awesome. And so instead of having to go in and put is awesome, and you know, for the next line is awesome for like a hundred times, if you have a an array that has a hundred elements, you can just write this little bit of code and it looks really good. And so that is one reason why arrays are useful. You can also tell that we are applying a single function, you know, names x equals names x plus awesome, we're applying a single function to all the elements in an array without having to put it in for each single element. So that's why arrays are useful. You can do one thing to many objects. For example, let's say you have a Space Invaders game where you have little aliens running across the screen. 
Well, instead of typing a little function telling each little alien to uh, r go left, you can have an, ar an array of aliens and tell that array to move left. And so this concludes this tutorial on how to create arrays and why arrays are useful. I do recommend that you learn more about arrays in other videos because they really are useful in not only the uh, business and computer world, but also in the science and physics world as well. So I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If this was helpful to you in any capacity, do click like. And I'm going to go ahead and clear this off for the next tutorial. And my name is Zachary, and I bid you farewell.